seen the movie Cool Runnings. It's that, but we go on the same track on our back, feet first. I would say luge at its very, very, very core is sledding. It's extreme sledding. We're steering the whole way down the track to find that perfect and fast line. We're the fastest sport on ice, um, which is a pretty cool title to have. This sport in itself is kind of a contradiction. Um, we're going over 80 miles per hour, uh, time to the thousands of a second, hitting a couple Gs of pressure, going down the track, banked curves. Um, precision really matters, perfection really matters when you're timed to the thousands of a second. I find that a lot of people think that what we do is incredibly easy, it looks like we're not doing anything. And that's because the best in the world make it look effortless. Sport is a lot of fun, but can be, as they say, dangerous. It's always a good reminder to read that before you go. It definitely doesn't get in your head at all. You know, with anything in life, there's, there's risk involved, and, and luge is definitely one of those sports that you can put yourself in a situation where you can find yourself injured. For me personally, I'm an adrenaline junkie, and that's what keeps me going. Uh, there's nothing like the rush you get when sliding. But it's a sport where you kind of are almost in control of how out of control you are. I made the Olympic team for 2018 and then had what I like to call the most spectacular crash of the Olympics. Honestly, it looked more intense from the outsider than it did to me when I was actually going through it. It was the perfect storm of, of things going wrong. And it, it ended with me having a really hard hit uh, on the the short wall of the track and I broke my neck and my back. Everything stopped for me after that. That part was easy, crashing was easy. It's after and kind of moving, moving in general. I don't even have to put another word after that. Moving again after that was hard. I mean, every your back is involved in everything. Same with your neck, right? So. It was, it was hard to find any comfort for a while. It was hard to then find motivation. It was hard. I don't like to use the word hard because that means the kind of negative things. Like I try to replace it with challenging, but there's nothing, that, that was beyond challenging. <laughs> so I said pretty, pretty early on right away that I didn't want to stop because I didn't want to be afraid of anything. So I didn't want to have this terrible ending to luge, have a crash and, and be afraid of it or not know if I could do it again. That just didn't, I didn't want to have that with me for the rest of my life. The track is now clear and we would start for Sweden. Podium my first World Cup back in Whistler, and then I also podiumed at World Championships that season. And I, like, it's I don't I don't have the words because it's still crazy to me when I think about that process. I was so broken, and I I downplay it a lot because I have to for myself to kind of get through it. But it's still challenging for me here now. I still feel the effects of it. I still. Um, and managing a lot of things that I never thought I would have to ma manage, <laughs> but I did it. So I guess that just shows <laughs> that we can all do something more than what we think we can do.
Emily, I think she came back stronger than she than she was before. She was a great slider before, no doubt about it. She made medals, but she has one advantage now, and it's it's a sad story that she had to go through this to learn this. But she's incredibly good at listening to her body. She understands her body like nobody else now, because she had to go through this, and she wanted to come back as fast as possible. And that took a lot of commitment, a lot of effort, and I think personally she's stronger now than she's ever been. people get into luge is this recruiting program where they go around the country in the summertime with wheels in the sleds and specifically get kids between like the ages of 11 and 14 to try it out and see how they do. We find a paved hill and we hold a clinic for about two hours at a time. First 10-15 minutes is an introduction to luge because like 99% of America nobody has any idea what they're actually getting into in the beginning and eventually by the end of the session the kids are going from the top of the hill down a ramp through a cone course, um, and we're just looking for athletes that are you know, athletic ability, coach ability, and natural talent in the sport. Um, and that's how I got started back in 2000, and that's how 99% of my teammates from the Olympics get started in luge as well. Yeah, so my story of luge is a bit different than most. Um, it starts in 2002, I was watching the Olympics on TV. It was just kind of encapsulated by the idea of luge. I thought it was the coolest sport I've ever seen. So the following summer, my dad and I had this idea to build a luge track in our backyard. Um, just as kind of like a father-son project, but it kind of got out of hand. And at its longest, it was probably several hundred feet long. I still to this day remember that first run, and it kind of still gives me a little bit of goosebumps. From what I've seen, um, they've been doing, putting a lot of work into building the um, Chinese Federation. Um, and it's something we've seen in the past when um, there's an Olympic somewhere where the country doesn't have a luge program in place already. Their, their country kind of supports them, um, builds the program, and then you just really hope that the, the program kind of carries on after the Olympics. They've put a lot of athletes into this and a pretty big investment. Now they have their own track. So they have the, the training facilities, they have you know, they have the work ethic and they have the coaches, so hopefully we'll see that program uh, stay, not only stay, but continue to grow and be a mainstay for the World Cup circuit. I hope that, you know, with there being another track in Asia, they can hopefully make an Asian tour part of the, of the season where we compete in Pyeongchang, we compete in Beijing to expand the sport to get that reach out to so many people. Um, I think it would be great. And I hope it. I hope we take advantage as a sport and and as our international federation. Fantastic possibility, an opportunity for this sport again. We had it with Korea as well, which I luckily was part of it. And so I ran through this development. It was great to see the Korean athletes on their home track at their home Olympic Games do really well. And I hope the same for the Chinese. And the Chinese, they have they have a whole different base to go off of. They started earlier with the program. They have a lot more people to to draw from. And I do expect that they will have a, a fairly strong presence at the end. Oh, metal's definitely possible. Um, how possible? I won't know until I actually get on the track. Okay, yeah, I really like that 10. The more you can let it run, the better it is, right? That's, that's the dream, right, is an Olympic gold medal. Um, I think any, any kid ever that's um, in any sport dreams of you know, going to the Olympics and getting, getting a gold medal. I think to grow the sport, a gold medal would certainly help, um, you know, the USA is very results oriented. The headline is always the person that has the gold medal. So um, I think us getting a gold medal would certainly help with exposure to the sport. 
Yeah, I definitely, I have the potential to be, to medal. I think that that's fair of me to say. I think if I were to win a medal, it's more about sharing that experience with everyone who has had a hand in getting me there. I'm in a good spot for myself, and I think that that can continue at the Olympics as well.